Libya is descending into greater chaos with almost 50 people killed as a result of tribal warfare in the last several days alone. Ethnic groups in the south of the country have been locked in bitter conflict to wrest power and territory from rival tribes. Well, let's uh, talk more on that with London-based activist and journalist Sukant Chandan. Well, it's um, been many months since the official victory of the Libyan revolution, but violence continues. Dozens are, are killed almost on a weekly basis. Why? I think um, the, the problem we have in Libya currently is that there is no actual basis for national unity. When before from 1969, Gaddafi had his revolution and within a year, the biggest military base of the United States at Wheelis Airfield was got rid of by in one year and the British Air Base. You know, there was actually a political leadership and a political momentum and organization and movement that sought to unite the tribes of Libya on the basis of independence and a progressive internal economic policy and anti-imperialist foreign policy. What we have now currently Currently, is uh, uh, Libya essentially has the whole nation has been lynched by NATO and their so-called Islamist allies, and this is happening across the region. NATO is uh, conducting regime change through its uh, 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 is, quote unquote Islamist proxies. So now all those tensions, all those divisions that the Gaddafi era had kind of united and kind of uh, you know kind of managed successfully has all come out in the open, and everyone is fighting everyone for a bit of the of, of the crumbs which NATO is throwing at them. But the, the, the transitional government is made up of Libyans. Why is it that they cannot resurrect that sort of stability in the Gaddafi era? Why are they failing to provide the security now? I mean, I think all the political forces that could provide that security were, were, were actually involved in, 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 in the Gaddafi uh, government. They've all been persecuted, they've been hunted. You know, Mr. Dorda, who was the permanent representative to the United Nations, is currently going through a ridiculous show trial, but all respect to him. He's perhaps one of the most upstanding and, and, and you know, dignified uh, humans of Libya, that just a three days ago he was on TV saying he was proud to serve under Gaddafi and that the new Libya is absolutely a country of death and destruction and, and just being ravaged. And, he, and, and people should, 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 should recognize that. And I think Mr. Dorda was right. And then you have the former prime minister uh, come, uh, be, being sent from Tunisia. Mr. Marzouki, the Tunisian prime minister, assured, assured the world that, that he, he wasn't going to send him back to Libya. But that's been done over his head. And there's rumors that uh, there was a $200 million uh, deal done to get him back. And he's being tortured now as well. So all, all, those, all those political forces that could bring Libya together are being currently persecuted by NATO's NTC government. But of course, the, the revolution in Libya attracted a lot of international attention at the time. You and I are talking about this now, this instability. But why do we hear so little about the violence that followed, uh, particularly very little response from uh, the NATO allies that obviously supposedly brought this new era to the country? Straight off, I'd really like to thank Russia Today for being really the only international news channel that has anything close to a semblance of balanced coverage on Libya. Every other channel, pretty much, has really fallen flat and has failed to provide just the professional level of balanced reporting. To directly answer your question, they've achieved what they wanted to achieve. That's NATO and the NTC forces. They wanted to overthrow Gaddafi and they wanted to scramble for, for, for the mineral wealth and for political power in Libya. In as much they want to do that, they've been successful. And that, and that alone is their definition of democracy. We widen that out to the, reg to, to, to the regional context of Africa. Before uh, the lynching of Gaddafi himself and the, and the regime change of Libya, no AFRICOM military exercises in Africa. That's the US military command, which had to be based in Stuttgart in Germany before uh, the overthrow of Libya. After the uh, overthrow of Gaddafi's Libya, already we're seeing 14 planned AFRICOM military exercises on the African continent. So absolutely, Libya was the veritable shield of Africa. And now that's dropped, you know, imperialism and the West is rolling on Africa. Sukant, thanks very much indeed for your thoughts. Sukant Chandan, author and journalist, live there in London.